Hey everyone, you're probably wondering, Reed, where the heck you been? What you been up to? Haven't heard from you in a while. I got sick. I mentioned I was sick prior videos, but let me just say I got really sick. and ended up getting pneumonia. Oh yeah, took me out. I was out for a week, just dead. Completely laying out, doing nothing, not wanting to think about anything, barely doing anything. Spent most of my time focusing on breathing. Important thing, that, being able to breathe, get the air in, let it out. Get the air in, let it out. <laughs> One thing that was really neat is with all the preps I had, I actually had everything I needed to completely treat myself and manage the pneumonia. Crazy, right? But if you're wondering, oh, did you do it all on your own? Make a guess, you know, what if you died? No, I actually went to the doctor and stuff. However, I checked and looked at myself carefully and analyzed it before I got the doctor's information and everything else, figure out what I planned to take, got the same thing and so on. So I actually knew exactly how to manage it and was well aware, which is great. I just made certain I had a medical professional double check what I was doing, which was right on the money, which is good. Now, because I have asthma, like I've mentioned before, pneumonia and stuff like that, not something to mess around with. Dangerous, extremely dangerous for me, especially. That's why I make certain I have extra preps to cover this. Like what if we got snowed in real bad and I couldn't get out to anyone and there was no way the uh, the ambulances are going to get to me better be able to deal with it myself because pneumonia can kill you quick, very quick. Now, the other thing though, is like, like, look at what's going on. Like, what if you had a pandemic and the emergency systems are overwhelmed? The hospitals are full of people and it doesn't take much to overwhelm the hospitals. I mean, if you get 5% of the people in an area, really sick and all that, seeking emergency medical help, you are going to flood the hospitals with people. They will have no beds within like 24 hours. It will be gone. So even though, you know, you are in dire need yourself, you may not get a bed, you may not get seen, you may not get treated. Plus, if they're dosing out all the uh, pharmace uh, pharmaceuticals they need for all these other people, and you happen to need one of those ones they're prescribing everyone else, you may be totally out of luck. That's why it's really important to have good medical preps. And I am pretty heavy on making certain I have really good medical preps and knowledge of knowing what the heck I'm going on. Now, a lot of prepping channels, a lot of other channels or survival channels, everything else, when they're talking about medical stuff, the one thing you hear over and over again is antibiotics. Yeah, they're important. You hear things like first aid, bandages, stuff like that. Mm, yeah, that's really important too. Tourniquets. That's also important, but they completely gloss over a whole bunch of other things. And some of the things I think are absolutely vital and I think people should do, I'm going to go over a couple of these things and feel free to leave comments, ask questions, and I'll be going more in depth in this many other times as well. But this is sort of a starter of what I consider essential medical knowledge and stuff you got to start digging into. It's very important. And here's a really important thing to start with stethoscope. You need one. You need to learn how to use it. You need one that can hear respiratory and cardiac. And there's easy to get. There's a lot of options. Some are very expensive. Some are reasonably priced. This is a reasonably priced one that actually does a fairly decent job. I'll leave a link to it in the description. Now, if anyone's curious, any of the links I leave in my descriptions, I don't get any money for. I don't get any money for anything I'm doing on this. This is all out of the kindness of my heart and because I have nothing else better to do with my time, it seems. <laughs> Eventually, it'd be great if I could earn a little money to at least pay some of the groceries and stuff later doing this. But for now, everything I do, completely free. So if anyone's wondering, any of the links I leave in the description, I don't have an Amazon shop, whatever. It's just, that's where I find and buy stuff. I live in the middle of nowhere. Needs stuff shipped to me. That's how it goes. Anyways, so get a stethoscope. Next time you're at the doctor, take it with you. Hey, say, hey, you know, if I wanted to, you know, keep an eye on myself, learn some of my own health, what am I trying to listen for? Get some ideas and work with them. A lot of doctors are actually quite happy to have someone that's proactive learning about their own health. That's what I did. I said, hey, how do I 
What am I listening for? What do I do with that? Learned how to listen to my heart, listen to the carotid artery, learned how to listen to the various lobes of my lungs. There's also lots of YouTube videos that show this, but it, having someone with you right then to help explain it is a big help. And this is a big help for me. I used my stethoscope and I was listening to my lungs. And what did I hear? Not only was it real hard to breathe and my chest was tight, kind of like how asthma is, I could hear all the crackling. And that's what it is. The, it, the lungs were filled and everything's swollen up and there was all this restriction in there. There was all sorts of crackling in there. All sorts of crap in the lungs, which is not good. And kind of heard like bubbles in a weird way. Yeah, fluid there. Now I did not get, you know, passing out, but I got to a point where I was like, this is pretty bad. And I was like, this is not a cold. This is something worse because my asthma medications were not helping me breathe as much as they should. Stethoscope helped me really know, got an idea of what I'm dealing with here. Let's take a look at something else really important. This is an O2 sensor and pulse rate monitor. When you go to the doctor, pretty much always put one of these on you. Really darn helpful. Now this one has an alarm that can go off if you get below, you know, lower 90s and stuff. Really helpful. The idea is, you know, if you couldn't get to the ER or the doctors, whatever, you're having to maintain things at home, you can put this on, get it going, and you can have the alarm set. So your person, your helper, you know, wife, other family member, friends, that's helping watch over you while you're sleeping. If you have a major downturn, you know, this thing's gonna start going off and you can take other action. The other thing is it will really help you know, you know, what are, what are these breathing problems? Am I out of breath? Am I actually really tight? Is it inflammation, all that? You can see what the O2 stats are doing in the response. And that's important. Now, when you start dipping into the 80s, uh, yeah, you've got an emergency on your hands and you have to take care of it right away. Big time important. But having one of these so you can monitor what the heck's going on is really important. It really tells you a lot. Also, gives you your heart rate. You can see it's like that. Particularly when you're having a lot of trouble with stuff going on, you may be involved, you know, fight or flight's kicking in, adrenaline's starting to move up. You can see your heart rate moving up. That also tells you a lot about what you're experiencing physiologically, you know, when you get a heart rate over 150, 160, yeah, you got a major issue going on. You're probably going to be sweating like crazy and shaking like crazy. It's important to realize what some of this stuff means and to see what the O2 stats are. Like I said, with an alarm built in, really helpful because someone can monitor, keep an eye. If it starts going off, oh, you need to take a look, get, see what's going on here. Wake you up, get you breathing deeper, so on and so forth. It's very important. This is an EpiPen. You've probably heard them. Talk about it in the news, how expensive they are and stuff like that. Well, what these things are is they're epinephrine and they're an auto injector. Stab yourself in the leg with it and it squirts some epinephrine in you. There's actually a lot more epinephrine in here than what gets injected. So you could theoretically harvest the extra to use if it's kept refrigerated, maybe. Haven't done it, haven't tried. If I ever do it, I can report back and tell you about that guy, that later. But these things are very important. Now, they're not just for allergies. If you have a severe asthma attack, they can get you going because they'll get, you know, engage the fight or flight re response. That giant jump of adrenaline opens everything up, get your heart kicking, stuff like that. The other thing is, like I said, if you're having other issues, or let's say you're having issues with medications that we're using, this stuff is often very important to correct the issues. And you never know what might go wrong in SHTF. I mean, it's SHTF, everything's going wrong. Having an EpiPen is very helpful. The other funny thing about this is this dosage, what it's basically doing is it's just kickstarting the rest of your adrenal system to say, move it, you gotta get in gear. Actually, same size dosing for a lot of animals. Something to be aware of is your animal gets stung by a bee, like your dog or whatever, it's swollen up to a giant thing and it can't breathe, an EpiPen could save its life as well. But that's something you have to weigh is, you know, do you want to let your animal die or, and save this in case you need it, or use it yourself, I mean, use it on them to save their life. Something to think about. Now, it's actually not too hard to get these. If you have any allergies or whatever, you can go talk to your doctor saying you're worried about your allergies like that because 
You know, sometimes some foods really bug you and just you have to take some Benadryl to deal with it. That's what my case was. Is I have a lot of foods that I have to be real careful with because I actually do have really bad reactions to. And Benadryl is usually how I take it. But because allergies get worse, often the sensitivities get worse because if you start avoiding those foods and you keep them out, that means your body it becomes more sensitive to them. It's a weird paradox in and of itself. But eating them is actually doing big time harm to you as well. So anyways, so you can say, hey, I'm having a lot of trouble with these foods. Can I get an EpiPen in case I have a major reaction? Most doctors are gonna say, yes. Might be something worth talking to. So if you have allergies and you have any relation to food, you might wanna see about getting one of these. They have a lot more use to help you with in certain other areas. Plus, like if someone's experienced shock, they just can kick them out of shock. I mean, so it's important. Something very important to know about. Some of you might already recognize this. This is a nebulizer system. This is a little air compressor. Pushes air through this tube, goes up into here. This is a Venturi. And in the Venturi, what it's gonna do is the liquid medicine solution that's in here, it's gonna vaporize it, and you breathe it in through the mouthpiece here. This is mainly treated for asthma. Very good for a lot of asthma issues. This is what helped keep me keep me breathing while the pneumonia was getting worse. Because it opened everything up. Direct treatment right into the lungs. Getting stuff going. Now, if you think about this, theoretically here, these things, what effectively it is, is if you had a salt, and we're talking like a medication salt, something like that dissolves in water, you could put the distilled water and the medication here, dissolve it, and you could get it right into you quickly. That only works for certain medications, and this is only for educational purposes for you to think about. But a nebulizer has a lot more use outside of asthma. You could see of a lot of other ways you could deliver a very important medication quickly, especially if you're trying to stop someone have a major reaction or problem to something. You'll have to research that on your own, because I am not a medical professional, and this is not medical advice in any sort of way. But a nebulizer might be something you might find a use for in your research. I would highly consider looking into it. Aside from antibiotics that everyone says you should have, and I do agree, antibiotics are very important, you need to have some dosing guides and information about antibiotics and how to treat them. The other thing I highly, highly recommend is getting a microscope and the ability with some stains and slides. So depending on the type of infection, you could actually get a sample of it and take a look at it. Being able to recognize strains of bacteria to see what they are will actually greatly help you in your ability to know what they're susceptible to. You can also do some sensitivity tests on the bacteria to make certain you're going to treat it with the right bacteria. Now this takes time, this takes practice, probably some biology courses, but it's something I would also highly recommend you do. Now, antibiotics are important. Very important to have, you know, so you ha it can be able to treat things. A lot of simple diseases can kill you, which are a simple treatment with some antibiotics. Now, for me, actually, my pneumonia was being bacteria-based. I knew what to go after and treat it with. However, there was something else vital for me to be able to deal with it, and that is something called prednisone. It is a steroid, a cortical steroid. It's not one that's gonna buff me out, make me super big and stuff. No, not like that. It's more of one that's gonna make me wanna eat everything in sight. It has a nice tendency to make you very hungry. The other thing though it does, is it does suppress the immune system slightly, or quite a bit, depending on the dosages, and it's very good anti-inflammatory. What it did was open up my airway significantly. Allowed me to cough up all sorts of amazingly colored green, black, red, and all sorts of grunk as the lining of my lungs had to be shedded out and coughed up. It was utterly miserable. And I grossed out Lee horribly and I said, hey, look at what I just coughed up. And she'd be like, oh my God, just put that in a Kleenex and toss it. <laughs> but yeah, us guys, we like to uh, share our scars and stuff. Just the women don't like it much. Uh, but anyways, See, and that's not an antibiotic. Prednisone is very important. One of those other very important drugs that I think people should have around if they can get some. Now, why else would you want prednisone? Well, say we do have a form of repeat of like the Spanish flu that killed millions worldwide. Well, the flu itself is not what kills you. It is your body going super crazy 
and having an immense immune response and it just attacks itself horribly attacks the lungs get filled with you know liquids it's like that and people die from the overreaction of their immune system suppressing the immune response bringing it back down with steroids is effective something to be aware of so that's something else to think about the other thing is steroids can help deal with some horrific reactions you may find you have an allergy to something that's really bad or like we say like what if we end up with a horrible fire and fine particulates in the air and it is absolutely murdering you these things can help now that's why i also say gas masks are important like for me i keep you know like those big full respirators like for people going to paint a car i have those things that way we get the air full of horrible smoke and all that i can still breathe it's a good thing i like breathing very important so one of the things I think is really important is to actually look at the WHO list of essential medicines. It's a big book, covers a lot of stuff, but it really opens your mind to see what are very important medications to have around, if at all possible, to take care of some major other illnesses should anything happen. Stuff for seizures, um, stuff for other classes of antibiotics, or to take care of you know, spazzy muscles. Example is there was an article, I'll put a link in the description, of a child who got hurt at home on a farm and they sewed, it up, sewed up the wound at home and took care of it at home. Well, he developed tetanus or lockjaw. I don't remember the name of the bacteria that causes it. It looks like a tennis racket. It has a long end and a spore usually. And uh, if I try to pronounce the name, you're all going to laugh at me immensely. But it's everywhere. That bacteria is everywhere. It's also anaerobic, meaning... It grows in the presence without oxygen. It can't survive without oxygen. When they sewed up the wound, they trapped it in there, and it happily, since it was a deep cut, so you have a deep cut, deep puncture, something like that, tetanus is deeper in there. It gets in the bloodstream, starts going. When it's closer to the surface, the body can deal with it a lot better. The only problem is, is the toxin it produces causes immense muscle spasms. That's why they call it lockjaw. But the only thing is, the spasms can be so horrifically bad, they can break bones, break backs. So like that. And I think the fatality rate's like 12, 15 percent. So like that. You know, check my numbers. I'm not 100 percent But I know it's scary enough to worry. Plus, how would you like to have some severe broken bones from immensely painful, god-awful muscle spasms? Knowing how to treat that quickly with some antibiotics, something to consider. The other problem though about it is the spores on these bacteria are immensely resistant. So cleaning out the wound very carefully with antiseptics and all that may not get it. It's a problem. So sometimes you got to debate also, should you sew up the wound or just get the bleeding to stop and leave it exposed to oxygen so you could kill the tetanus because it can't deal with oxygen? Or could you take pure oxygen and spray it in the wound to help kill any of the spores or any of the bacteria in there? Eh, good question to think about. But like I say, antibiotics are important. First aid is important, but having a much wider class of things to be able to treat things with is extremely important. And having the knowledge. I keep collecting more medical texts and reading a great deal about this stuff. That way, something goes wrong, and if we don't have a doctor or a surgeon or something like that, well, I will somehow learn and get it figured out. Treat myself and Lee a lot of times for problems we have, and have a pretty good idea of what's going on because, like I say, I read way too much. But when they focus narrowly only on antibiotics or some first aid, really cutting yourself off at the knees so to speak there's a lot more to be aware of and it's really important sometimes survival is going to depend upon deeper knowledge i hope this was helpful you'll see me a lot more and i'm so glad i am no longer coughing up horrifically ugly things that i show lee and she gives me a horrible glare at take care everyone this is reed out for now Got stuff done, got checked, but what I did was like I checked, checked, yeah.